live from case at 12 the night beat starts right now we are now less than two hours from 2022 and as much as we want to leave covid in 2021 that's just not possible we want to give you a look here at the city's new year's eve party downtown you know doctors have warned against crowding and and they continue to encourage people to wear quality masks and the concern here of course is the highly contagious omicron variant we have seen hundreds of cases pile up each day after christmas and it's having other impacts like at the bear county jail back in late november the sheriff said that one inmate had covid 19 and now 38 inmates have the virus the sheriff says that 25 of those people had COVID before they were arrested and then carried the virus with them into the jail. Emergency rooms are also getting clogged up with people looking for COVID testing. Governor Greg Abbott asked the federal government for more testing sites in Bear County and other areas, as well as medical personnel and more monoclonal antibodies. But the governor is still against masks and vaccine mandates. So the key to what happens next is what we see in terms of crowds and masking the night teams. John Paul Barajas is downtown where the New Year's Eve celebration is now taking place. So John Paul, tell us, what are you seeing out there? Well, Stephanie, uh, there's a ton of people out here tonight. We're going to pan around a little bit just to give you a better idea of what the crowd actually looks like. So again, a ton of people out here ready to kick off the new year and hopefully in a good way. But I will tell you out of the majority of people that are here, there are not a lot of them wearing masks. Some do have masks on. I don't want to say nobody is, but the majority of people out here are maskless. And a lot of people we spoke to said it's kind of come and hang out and celebrate at your own risk. People are eager to party the night away into the new year, but as the Celebrate SA event fills up, as well as others like it, health officials worry so will our hospitals. Morning, Many of those in attendance, his mindset is, come at your own risk. I think if you're sick, you should stay inside. If you're not sick, then you should be able to go out and party just fine. If you're elderly, I would imagine you probably wouldn't be out here. <laughs> I would hope not. Um, if you do, I mean, that's on you, I guess. But COVID doesn't exist in just one place. People can carry the virus and pass it on to others like the elderly. Super spreader can happen in your living room if you don't take the, your own precautions. Omicron is highly, highly transmissible. And in order for us to break that chain, we're asking people to wear masks, don't gather in tight crowds. Although the city's New Year's Eve party still went on, Mayor Ron Nirenberg preached for people to take precautions. Many people weren't wearing masks on the event grounds. University Health is already seeing a rise in trauma, heart attack, and stroke patients at their emergency rooms. COVID-19 is adding to those visits. Even though we, we certainly have seen that it's clinically milder or more moderate than some of the previous variants, uh, it's extremely transmissible. And even a small percentage of individuals who are ill out of a large number of people ends up being a large number of people that can get ill and end up in the hospitals. County Judge Nelson Wolf also speaking today, asking people to get the vaccine to lessen symptoms one might face. 80% of them are in, of our hospitalization are unvaccinated. So I would say to you, if you got an unvaccinated friend, try to talk them into getting it or stay the hell away from them. And right now, doctors are saying not to go to the emergency room unless it is an actual emergency. And if you do find yourself in a large crowd, like I am myself, to wear a mask and one of the better ones, like an N95 or a KN95. John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. John Paul, thank you. Now, all new tonight, police are dealing with a case of road rage. Just take a moment and you see those bullet holes? You're about to see them in the car window. Yeah, looks like the police were standing uh, just in front of him. The police say that the suspect shot at another driver before taking off. All of this happened on La Cantera Parkway near 1604. Police say that the victims were hit by shattered glass, but not those bullets. So that is good news. They drove to UTSA. They called police for help. So now officers are looking for the shooter. Witnesses told police that the suspect took off in a blue SUV. This last day of the year doesn't mean that the search for Lena Keel is over. A lot of you are still sharing her picture on social media. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children lists her among the nearly two dozen children who are missing in San Antonio, and they went missing this year alone. 
The three year old that we're talking about was last seen December 20th at a playground at her apartment off of Fredericksburg Road. The FBI and San Antonio Police Department first focused on that very complex before searching through a green belt. Volunteers have also stepped in to help in the search, and they're just asking that if you know where she is, if you see her, please call police. One man dead, another under arrest, and police say that this case all started with an argument over dogs. 18-year-old Jordan Eaton is accused of killing Valentin Gonzalez IV outside of an apartment on Wurzbach Road yesterday, and according to an affidavit, Eaton approached Gonzalez and his wife before arguing about the way that their dogs were treated. Gonzalez's wife says that Eaton then pulled out his gun and then fired towards her. There was some sort of a struggle between the two men, and that's when she says that her husband was shot in the stomach. Now another big story tonight. You know, Betty White, she, the actress who played some of television's most endearing personalities, has passed away on this very last day of the year. We are saying goodbye to the great Betty White. She passed away at the age of 99. Many fans visited her star on the Walk of Fame today. That actress won seven Emmys during a career that spanned several decades. She was also an animal rights activist. Actor Harry Winkler described her as genuinely warm and funny. Her humor was so spontaneous. You know, it is very sad that she has passed away uh, and that we have lost uh, her energy, but her life is to be celebrated. Yes, it is. You know, Betty White would have turned 100 years old in just a few weeks, and she's well known for her character on The Golden Girls. She was also one of the few women in the early 1950s to produce a sitcom. You know, tributes continue to pour in from other actors and comedians tonight. President Joe Biden is also reacting. Our web team has an article with the messages that are being shared, and you can find that article on our website, ksat.com. Now let's talk about some San Antonio history. So you may not know this, but the very reason that your home is actually comfortable on a hot summer day is because of a local business. So tonight we're gonna explore the legacy of the Friedrich family, which started as a unique horn furniture business, then grew to an air conditioning brand that is still going more than 140 years later. The night team's Patty Santos has this story in our series that's called History Untold. This company was founded in the 1880s um, by the Friedrich family. The rare Friedrich horn designs that launched the San Antonio Furniture Company are still around. I'm told that there is examples uh, in the Smithsonian and even in Buckingham Palace uh, where these chairs are still in existence. But it's the next chapter of the company's history that's really cool. In the 1920s, got into refrigeration equipment for restaurants, bars, things like that. From furniture ice boxes to the next big thing. In the uh, 1950s, we were the first to introduce a window air conditioner. But chilling in your home was a luxury. I think had a limited number of people who could afford them, and they were also pretty large and heavy. Today, you can find Friedrich AC units in homes, apartments, hotels, and senior living centers. You might also still be using one of the original units. Several years ago, a consumer called us up and said they had a really old air conditioner. Would we like it back? And we found out it was the fourth air conditioner we ever built in 1952. And to this day, it still runs and blows cold air. The 140-year-old legacy business continues to be based in the Alamo City and continues to test and look for new sustainable ways to keep us cool. We want people to see Friedrich products locally and think that we're a good employer and part of the local community. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Now still ahead tonight, all about tradition as many of us are hoping for a better year ahead. And we're gonna take a look at some rituals around the world coming up. Also, she served as an assistant coach for the San Antonio Spurs and now Becky Hammond is taking a lead spot in Las Vegas. That story coming up in sports. 
Temperatures right now feeling very spring-like, not really New Year's Eve-like out there. 73 degrees officially in town at the airport, 76 Stinson, Pleasanton 74, a few 60s as you get up into the hill country, 64 at Kerrville and 69 right now in Fredericksburg. So still unseasonably warm outside. The fog is settling in because of the mugginess out there. Visibilities are starting to be reduced. They shouldn't be very problematic though overnight and the fog's just going to be very brief tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, record challenging warmth on the way and then shortly thereafter, we're going to have our first freeze. I'll break down this next cold front, let you know what to expect and when coming right up. This essay salute holiday greeting is brought to you by the Joe A. Gomez Law Firm. Hi, my name is Luis Guerrero. This is Jose Loredo and this is Jorge Grajeda. And we are attorneys at the Gomez Law Firm. Enjoy the presents, enjoy the turkey, but more importantly, enjoy the family. Merry Christmas from the Joe Gomez Law Firm. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. You know, around the world, people are doing what they can to ensure that 2022 is a much better year. Let's start with Romania, where some people dressed up in bear costumes and danced to the beat of a drum. It's a tradition that is believed to help remove the bad spirit of an old year and usher in something better. Now, in Brazil, worshipers celebrated the goddess of the sea by offering flowers and gifts and praying to free the planet from the pandemic. You know, several parts of the world have already welcomed 2022. This here is a look at the fabulous celebration over in Thailand, and you can see splashes of color all across the night sky. Just beautiful. And here's a look at the scene earlier in Australia. The famous fireworks display happened over the Sydney Harbour Bridge and Opera House, and that's how the people there marked the new year. Also look. I mean, fabulous. Look at that. There's also a special display in London. Take a really good look at the center of your screen. You see that there appears to be an image of a lion right in the sky amid the fireworks display. All of that to ring in 2022. But now let's take it stateside. All right. We want to see what's happening here in the States. A live camera here over at Times Square in New York City where you can see all those people there. They're just so happy there on West 45th Street. Just they want to welcome in 2022 for a little over what 40, 46 minutes away from the new year there in New York. And then we have just under two hours for our pate. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, we do. And we have some major changes coming in a short period of time tomorrow night. Uh, wait till you see this temperature drop we're talking about in just a 12 hour period. Today, I want to point out 83 degrees, the high temperature that tied the record high for the day today. So another day where we had record challenging warmth. 89 in Pleasanton, Catula topped out at 92, Uvalde and, and Del Rio, 81 for high temperatures. Now watch as we go into tomorrow, still more of the same, 83 degrees. That would tie the record even for tomorrow. But then by Sunday, the warmest we'll get is 50. Monday, 55, and that's nothing compared to the low temperatures. So let's get right to it, talk about what's happening out there, and of course, look at the cold front that's headed our way. And that cold front, it's just moving into Oklahoma pretty much as we speak. Our temperatures, unseasonably warm. I mean, most of us in the 70s outside the hill country, within the hill country, we of course have some 60s out there. And you get up into the panhandle of Texas and it's 52 in Amarillo, even Lubbock at 54, not a big temperature drop there, <laughs> but look at Guyman, Oklahoma, 30, Wichita, Kansas, 29, right behind this front. Temperatures fall off sharply, and in the core of the cold air, we've got temperatures at 20 below zero across the Northland, North Dakota, northern Minnesota. Bismarck's 21 below, International Falls, 20 below. That's where the core of the cold air is. We'll get clipped by that cold air, and it'll affect us for a couple of days. Actually, a fairly typical cold front for this time of year. So let me take you through time in terms of temperatures here. Tomorrow morning, we start off in the 60s to near 70 degrees. It's going to be a balmy start to the day, a little bit cooler west of I-35. And then by the afternoon, the temperature map's going to look just like it did today. About 86 Del Rio and Eagle Pass, 91 Catula, Laredo, 94 degrees on New Year's Day. In the hill country, we'll be in the upper 70s. But look what happens over a 12-hour period. We're talking from 5 p.m. Saturday to 5 a.m. Sunday, we're going to drop about 50 degrees 
as a result of this cold front. So again, you're not going to notice the cold front tomorrow, but by Sunday morning, our first official freeze is likely Monday morning. We could have a hard freeze in many locations, especially the hill country. 25 is what we're expecting in San Antonio. Yeah, we warm up a little bit for those morning temperatures this week till our next cold front hits next Thursday. Dew points right now at 70. So the fog is thickening all this low level moisture. The fog's going to be uh, thickening overnight, but it's not going to last very long tomorrow. We've got the dry line, the dry line that's coming in from West Texas. It's going to hit us around the noon hour. That's when dew points fall off. So by noon tomorrow, you're not going to feel the humidity and then very dry air for Sunday and Monday. If you're susceptible to dry skin, chat lips Sunday, Monday, be prepared. Of course, the winds will pick up too. Uh, we're expecting some wind gusts up to about 40, 45 miles per hour Saturday night on into the first part of Sunday. All the moisture with the upper level system that's helping to kickstart the cold front, that's all going to stay to the north of us. So unfortunately, we won't get any much needed moisture, just sunny, warm tomorrow, sunny, cold and breezy on Sunday. And if that's not enough, another cold front, very similar type is going to hit us next Thursday. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, yeah, still have a lot to get through now, Andrew. What happened to the Spurs? <laughs> I know. Look, they were they got down nine nothing early. It looked like they had taken control late second quarter and even led in the third quarter, but eventually the wheels just fell off. When we come back, we'll talk about the Spurs' what tough loss to the Grizzlies. What went wrong? We'll hear from Coach Pop after the game. Plus, they are back in the national championship. Alabama, who is going to join them? We got the highlights from both semifinal matchups next. Our San Antonio Spurs looking to close out 2021 on a high note, kicking off a seven-game road trip in Memphis against the Grizzlies tonight. And the home team starts off on fire. Ja Morant gets an open look and hits the jumper, and the Grizz jump out to a 9-0 lead a little over two minutes into the game, forcing a San Antonio timeout. But the Spurs rally all the way back. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, hits a triple, and San Antonio takes the lead 21-18. They still trail, though, 32-26 after one. Second quarter now, scary moment early on. Former Spur Kyle Anderson drives into Derek White, and his elbow makes contact with White's forehead, drawing blood. No bad blood between those two, though. Just an accident. The Spurs training staff got White a bandage for the cut, and he would stay in the game. White then finds Bryn Forbes for three, and he knocks it down, 41-40 Spurs. And the hot shooting continues from there. This time it's Keldon Johnson hitting a long three for a 51-48 lead. But the Spurs trail again, 63-61 at halftime. Third quarter, White is still making plays. This time he spins in the paint and finds Jakob Pertl for the floater. And the Spurs go up by three. Then a few minutes later, White gets a floater of his own to drop in. And San Antonio leads 70-65. to You can give the Spurs medical team a hockey assist on those plays there. But from there, the Grizz take control for the rest of the quarter. Morant finds Brandon Clark for the alley-oop slam. And Memphis heads into the fourth quarter with a 90-79 lead. Reserves for the Spurs still battle, though, for the rest of the game. Keita Bates Diop comes up with the steal and finds Joshua Primo for the slam in transition. Nice play, but the points are cosmetic. Spurs drop their final game of the year, 118 to 105. We came back from the beginning of the game very well, I thought, and uh, played hard. But the third quarter, we were sloppy with the turnovers. They got into transition, scored, uh, and that really set the tone for the second half in the, in the ball game. Next up, the Spurs will take the court next year. That's tomorrow against the Pistons at 6 p.m. Almost exactly one year ago, Becky Hammond became the first acting female head coach in NBA history after Greg Popovich was ejected from a game against the Los Angeles Lakers. And today, she was officially hired by the WNBA's Las Vegas Aces to be their next head coach. Hammond played in the WNBA for 16 years and was a six-time All-Star. She's been on the Spurs coaching staff as an assistant since 2014. Now she gets her first head coaching job. What has Coach Pop seen from Becky as an assistant coach? The same talents that all these men have. Uh, you know, same talents. Intelligence, uh, intuitive feel for the game, uh, work ethic, ability to teach. It's no different because she's a woman. She has to have the same qualities that all these guys have coaching, and she has them. Hammond will finish the rest of the regular season with the Spurs before heading to Vegas. Some sad news to pass along this evening. Ten-time NBA champion Sam Jones passed away today. The Boston Celtics legend played 12 seasons in the NBA and was inducted into the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame in 1984 and was known as one of the greatest shooters of all time with his signature bank shot. Bill Russell famously said if the Celtics needed a shot to win the game, he wanted Sam Jones to take it. Jones leaves us at the age of 88.
The college football playoff semifinals kick off with a battle between David and Goliath. Cincinnati versus Alabama in the Cotton Bowl and Goliath wasted no time taking control tonight. Opening drive, quarterback Bryce Young slings it to Slade Bolden for the eight yard score and seven nothing lead. And then late in the first half, Bama up 10 to three when they strike again. Young goes deep for Ja'Cory Brooks who hauls it in and breaks the plane for a 44 yard touchdown strike that sends the tide into halftime up 17 to three and they roll to a 27 six victory reaching the championship game for the sixth time in the eight year history of the playoffs. The second semifinal, the Capital One Orange Bowl between number two Michigan and number three Georgia. It looks like the Bulldogs took their cues from Alabama. Opening drive, Stetson Bennett hits Brock Bowers for the nine yard touchdown. Seven plays, 80 yards, seven nothing Georgia. Wolverines got aggressive on their next drive, trying to keep pace, going for it in Bulldog territory, but this pass falls incomplete. That's a turnover on downs, and you know Jim Harbaugh is not happy with that one. Georgia then makes them pay. Watch this. Running back Kenny McIntosh finds Adonai Mitchell in the end zone for the gadget play touchdown. Bulldogs all over the maize and blue, and they are moving on with a 34-11 victory. So the championship game is set. It'll be Alabama and Georgia in SEC rematch Monday, January 10th at 7 p.m. in Indianapolis. This year I just grew a brotherhood with these guys, and I mean, there's no better feeling. Back on March 12th, seniors Gavino Ramos and Brian Armstrong unleashed a barrage of three-pointers and helped power Antonian to the TAP 6A state title. The Apaches are just one of several incredible sports stories from 2021. And as we mentioned at 6, this Sunday night on Instant Replay, we are recapping 12 of the biggest sports headlines from the San Antonio area. And again, I'll mention it again, it was very difficult to narrow it down to 12. It was the first time Larry and I were kind of mentioning it's like, we wish we were case at 18 or 22 or something yeah. so we could get all of these stories in. Awesome year. Okay, awesome. We look forward to seeing that. Yeah. We'll be right back after this. For what it's worth, you are an awesome audience. And that does it for the night beat. Have a wonderful night and a happy new year. And now we're sending it back to New York so that we can count down the rest of the year. Happy new year.